Um, I wanted to talk about the things I've done to stay healthy over the last 32 years with paralysis. Um, I've always stood a lot, and then I also use a bike with electrical stem. So this is the standing robotic device. I would get in it now, but um, I have I get I ordered new batteries, so um, it's not moving really well. But I have several videos on YouTube of, of me in it, moving around in it. Um, I love it. So I've always used some sort of standing device. Uh, this one is one where you can be mobile and standing at the same time, which I love because my hands are free to be functional. Um, I also have other video tips on the YouTube where I'm using um, an exoskeleton, which you have to have a walker with that, and it it actually mimics step taking. You know, it, it does that action for you, but uh, you have to have some balance. You have to have a therapist with you, and you have to. You know, you're, it's a lot of work for your upper body, so you can't do anything functional with your hands. In this one, um, you can you get in it, and then with that joystick, I can go all over my house. And like I said, um, I have other videos of that. I'm gonna. I also um, this prevents wounds. It keeps your bones stronger. It improves your digestion. Uh, uh, my whole platform. I was in Wheelchair America 2019. My whole platform was about standing and technologies that keep people with disabilities healthy. And um, I've also written some white papers that are on my, if you go to um, uh, New Motion, I'm oh, sorry, Life Possible, Life, L-I-F-E-P-O-S-S-I-B-L-E-K-R, Life Possible K-R, um, backslash newmotion.com. There, that goes straight to a bunch of articles that I've written. Um, and there is uh, one white paper that I wrote with an OT educator, her name's Leanne Hoffman, she's amazing. And we talked about, I did a lot of uh, research of medical journal articles about all of the positive health benefits of standing, um, not just for people with disabilities, uh, but also people without disabilities, and decreased diabetes, um, decreased levels of obesity. Um, there's just a lot of data to talk about why we should be standing, and that's whether you can stand alone or assisted standing, which is just like, duh. Don't understand what people don't understand about that. So anyway, I've done that and I've been really healthy as a result. So um, and then I'm going to show you my electrical stem bike and um, this is it. This is um, Restorative Therapies is the company that makes it. This is their RT 500 or 300. RT 300. And um, so I have electrodes that I put on all of the muscle groups, glutes, quads, hamstrings, abs, um, uh, gastrox, um, and then anterior tib, um, all of those muscles groups. And then uh, the computer synchronizes that in a way that your brain would normally do that in order to pedal a bicycle and can add and uh, resistance as your body can tolerate it. So I ride for about an hour, it uh, increases circulation to my lower body, can creates muscle tone, like I, w I wouldn't have like a thigh um, after 32 years, or actually 32 days of being paralyzed. Um, you lose, you atrophy really fast and this is a way to keep muscle tone. Not depending on your level of injury, um, some of those lower levels like I talked about with the flaccid um, bowel also do not react to electrical stimulation, but most people um, T10 and above do and um, can benefit from that in some way. This is really, uh, I was paralyzed before Christopher Reeves. I was always at, like, I wanted all of this technology the minute I saw it in 1987. Christopher Reeves made it even bigger. Um, you know, he was a quad and he used an electrical stem bike um, for the same purpose as I did. He wanted a cure to happen and he wanted to have some muscle tone, you know, went for when that happened. So, um, some really good resources for people with spinal cord injuries specifically are the Christopher and Dana Reeves Foundation and UnitedSpinalAssociation.org. If you go to those um, websites, you can learn a lot about spinal cord injury. Um, and I wanted to talk a little bit about autonomic dysreflexia. So autonomic dysreflexia is a, something that happens to people when they become paralyzed. And um, so your autonomic nervous system kicks in. So normally when you have a painful sensation or um, your bladder is full or you need to take, have a bowel movement, um, you, you, know, you get pain signals and you can feel which part of your body that's coming from and that alerts you to go do something about it. Um, we don't have that anymore, so your autonomic nervous system kicks in and um, it causes blood pressure spikes. 
So for people who are quads and higher level injuries, their blood pressure spikes become very dangerous and cause stroke or death. Um, so they have to be very, very careful. And a lot of times the first thing you do is you get up, you make sure, you know, if they're using a Foley catheter, they make sure that there's not like a kink in it, that the urine's not backing up into their kidneys. Um, if they have double bowel movement, they get on the bed and somebody does a skin check um, to check what is the root cause of, of this blood pressure spike. For me, it's more mild. I'm at a T10 paraplegic level. Um, but if my bladder is full, I will have like my nose might swell, my fingers, and then occasionally, if it's like really bad, I might start to get like a pressure headache, which is, is definitely a spike in blood pressure. Um, but it's a, it's a it's a good thing. Um, now with uh, spinal cord injury and pregnancy, um, you know your body's going through a lot of different things, and um, you, they do keep a very close eye on autonomic dysreflexia. Um, there's also a lot of things going on, just like you know pressure on your bladder is increasing that kind of thing. So. But it's a way for you to, your body letting you know something's not right. Um, and although uh, for higher level injuries it can be dangerous, it's actually it's kind of a blessing in disguise. If it's not, uh, you, you might have urine backing up into your kidneys and or a skin. So you're sitting on something that's hurting and causing a huge pressure sore and you don't know it, but this is a way for your body to indicate like something's wrong, you need to go check. So. Um, uh, that's kind of like the basics of autonomic dysreflexia, but if you see someone getting uncomfortable, sweating, um, you know, their head starts to hurt, um, any kind of like, that that could be a sign of, of an autonomic dysreflexic reaction and you need to uh, take care of that. So anyway, that is it. And I believe this concludes the tour of, uh, of my house. And I welcome any questions that you guys might have. So I'm looking forward to getting emails or however you want to get those to me. But definitely, I've, I'm on social media. Um, so Instagram, uh, Twitter, and Facebook. And it's Life Possible KR. My name is Karen Roy, so the initials are Life Possible KR um, on all of those platforms. And I have all of the blogs on the New Motion website. If you actually Google Karen Roy and New Motion, you can get to the website. And I have a bunch of articles and blogs. That's what I do. I'm a brand ambassador for New Motion. And um, so I, I write disability related blogs. And um, so you might be able to um, share those with people or learn a little bit more about kind of daily life for someone who uses a wheelchair. So anyway, you guys have a great day. Stay safe and uh, we'll see you soon.